Good evening. Welcome to the Enrichment Hour. My name is Diana Nasman, and I'm representing the committee this evening. We're delighted to see all of you folks who ventured out this evening, and we hope there are also a lot of folks watching on TV. Folks in the homes, folks over in the court, and also those who are over in Bristol Health. We welcome you all. This evening, a special program. We have a celebration of Christmas with story and song. Karen Henderson is the program creator. She's also a biblical storyteller. And Pat Penrose is at the piano and later also at the organ. We also have the Bristol Village Chorus here in the first three rows under the direction of Gerald Foreman and some special music later on by Sherry Sapienza and Jerry Prague. Please welcome Karen and Pat and later the other musicians. Good evening and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Oh, you can do better than that. Merry Christmas. That's better. Now you're getting into the spirit. Well, we're going to experience Christmas and our celebration in storytelling and in song. And I want to thank you for coming out this evening, not knowing what the weather's going to be like when we leave, and trusting that the event will be worth your while. We've never done anything like this before, so we're rather testing the waters. We're going to be experiencing Christmas through storytelling from creation and the promise of a Savior to the fulfillment of that Savior's birth. After all, that is what Christmas is about, isn't it? And to let you know what is happening in the program, you have a printed program. Do you have a hymnal? Okay, because you're going to need a hymnal as well. The first part of the program is a couple different kinds of storytelling, a biblical storytelling, and then just telling you things that are not scripture word by word, but they're in scripture. And then we have a lovely story at the end of this uh, program as well. And when the storytelling part of our program is over, then we're going to get to sing the story to each other in the carols. So we are ready to begin with our Father's love in storytelling and in song. When did Jesus begin to exist? The beginning. In the beginning, God. This is what John tells us in his apostle, chapter one, a gospel account, chapter one, verses one through three. Hear the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God from the very beginning. He made everything. Without him, nothing. Not one single thing was made that was made. Creation. Out of nothing. What an awesome God. The first two chapters of Genesis tell us of God's creating out of nothing the heavens and the earth and all living things. And after each day of creation, God said, it is good. And then he created the first human being. That was the end of his creation process. And he said it was very good. And it was very good for a while until things went sideways and humans brought sin into the world. But even then, even then, God's love prevailed. The same love that caused him to create the heavens and the earth and everything that there is, that same love caused him create, to create a plan. And he announced that plan in the Garden of Eden right after Adam and Eve had rebelled against him. Can you imagine that kind of love? And what he declared was, 
first was about the serpent, which is the symbol of Satan. The serpent will bruise the heel of the woman's seed, her offspring, her children. But that's not the end of the story. And that woman's seed, her offspring, will crush the serpent's head. So our Savior will be wounded and Satan will be dealt a final blow. We're going to sing of this Father's love. It's on page 181 in your hymnal. We will be singing all of the verses. And be careful, we're putting the amen on this one. It's the only one we have in our hymn book that has an amen. And it's not the kind that you expect. So just be ready and watch its kind of winding ways. The Father's love. The Father's love. Before the world began, the Father's love, even through rebellion of those that he created. The Father's love, justice, and mercy shown in his promise of the coming of the Savior. And this brings us to the word becoming one of us. You remember in the Gospel account of John, the word, Jesus, didn't just suddenly appear in the Nativity story. The word was with God in fellowship from the beginning. Luke tells us how this word became incarnate, uh, took on human flesh, or as Eugene Peterson says in the message, moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was during the time that Cornelius was the governor of Syria. So everyone went to his own town, his hometown, to be registered. And so also Joseph went up from Nazareth in Galilee 
to Judea, to Bethlehem, the house of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there with Mary, his fiancée, who was very pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths, in bands of cloth, and she laid him in a manger, a feeding trough, because there was no room for them in the inn. But later, there would be room on a cross. That night, nearby, there were shepherds living in a field, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Shepherds, the lowest of the low in Jewish society. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory shone all around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of a joy that shall be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in bands of cloth, snugly, in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a great company of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all whom God favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds looked at each other and they said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened that the Lord told us about. And so they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the news, telling all that they had heard about this child. And everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds had told them. And Mary... Sweet, gentle Mary treasured up all of these things, pondered them, and held them close to her heart. And the shepherds? The shepherds returned rejoicing and praising God for all they had heard and seen, which was exactly as they had been told the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God what a joy can you imagine being one of those shepherds and being one of the first on this entire earth to hear about Jesus' birth that's just amazing to me we have a story of grace filled salvation And now we get to sing the story to each other in carols. So look at your program, please. A vast majority of the carols we love are inspired by that very scripture that you just heard. And many of them are listed here. You notice the bold print, the coming of Messiah, and then there are a couple of hymns. There will be bold print sometimes introducing just one hymn, sometimes two, three, or four or more. What you will be doing is that I will announce that section. Pat will begin the introduction, short introductions, because you know all of these. You don't need to hear them all the way through. And then follow the program on which, uh, how many verses and which verses it is that we sing. So, do you all have your uh, hymns turned to page 183 to be ready for that first hymn? Okay. The Coming of the Messiah.
Songs of His Birth.
The next song is long. It has six verses. But it tells most of what we heard in the Nativity story from Luke. And it's one of those carols, one of those hymns, that if you pick just a little bit of it, it doesn't tell the story of the hymn. So we're going to be singing all six verses, A Song of the Shepherds. Song of the Angels. Traditionally, we celebrate the wise men's visit to the Christ child during the time of the nativity. 
I don't know about you, but my nativity set has the wise men in it. Mm. Present scholarship has really shown that they really came about two years later. But you know what? It doesn't matter when they came. We know they came. And so we sing a song of the wise men. need to warn you, the refrain, are you on page 218? This is Go Tell It on the Mountain. It begins with the refrain, and it ends with the refrain. So when you're done with the third verse, you ain't done yet. You have to go back and do the refrain. A song of telling. joy and just plain old music. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't you feel like just dancing that joy? That was just great. Well, sometimes our rejoicing to this good news of our Savior is loud and robust, like we just did now. And sometimes it's very quiet and meditative. Sherry Sapienza and Jerry Prod are going to tell us a story and lead us in singing one of our favorite carols known all over the world. It is both silent and holy. The word 
words of this beautiful carol were born over a hundred years ago in a little village in Austria. It happened on the night before Christmas. The parish priest, Father Joseph Moore, seemed troubled that night. The old organ in the little church was broken. He thought of the Christmas Eve service. If only there could be some special music. Coming home from a visit to a parishioner, Father Moore found himself on the heights overlooking the little village. The sight of this peaceful town, wrapped in a blanket of snow, stirred his imagination. A few lights glimmered in the silent darkness. So it must have been in Bethlehem on that silent holy night when Christ was born. Silent night, holy night. Words came to him. He hurried home so he wouldn't forget. The next day he showed the poem to his organist, Franz Gruber. As he read the words, Franz felt the beauty of that first holy night began to sing, and those who listened knew the song would be immortal. There was no organ in the church on Christmas Eve. Father Moore sang with Franz, accompanying him on the guitar. The congregation listened in wonder to the first rendition of a song that was to be a Christmas gift to all the world. Please join us as we sing Silent Night together, as they did the night before Christmas Eve in that little church in Austria.